Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good evening, I should say. Yes. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you in my classroom, Dr. Litwin. Thank you. It's, it's very nice. It's very nice to be here. I, I wish I were there in person. I will tell you, but uh, it's nice to be here at least electronically. Well, it's not a good day to be here today because it's one of the coldest days, and it was actually snowing in Athens. I don't believe it. Yes, uh, yes, yes. I do have a run of bad luck with my speakers. Um, usually, something happens. My next speaker will probably have an earthquake or something. <laughs> well, don't me. I'm Los Angeles. <laughs> Okay, can you hear us all right? Yeah, I hear you great. Okay, so um, let's begin. I do want to give a short introduction. Uh, I just want to let you know I am recording this session as I, I told you previously. And you, you are being recorded and we'll have your presentation and then a question period. Okay? Great. Okay. Can we close at least one of the lights? Okay. Um, Dr. Tsolkas, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. I would like to thank you for being here on this cold afternoon. This evening, via Skype, the School of Foreign Languages of the National Kapodistrian University of Athens has the honor of introducing Dr. Mark S. Litwin, who is a professor and chair of the Urology Department at the David Geffen School of Medicine of UCLA and Professor of Health Services at the UCLA School of Public Health. Dr. Litwin teaches courses in healthcare delivery systems, medical outcomes research, quality of life assessment, and clinical urologic oncology. He has greatly contributed to the healthcare system of America, as one of his projects involves being awarded $76 million to provide prostate cancer care to low-income, uninsured men in California. Therefore, without further ado, allow me to present Dr. Litwin. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria. It's a, it's a real pleasure to uh, be attending there and to have a chance to share with you some of my perspectives about uh, communication and survivorship in patients and the way that uh, we perceive it, which I am quite certain is not much different from the way people perceive it around the, around the world. Um, as you mentioned, I am a professor of urology and I specialize in urologic oncology. So the perspective that I bring is one of a very long history with oncology patients. However, there's no doubt in my mind that the lessons that we have learned in oncology patients are really applicable to all different types of patients. Of course, not just in urology and in surgery, but in oncology, in pediatrics, in gynecology, internal medicine, really all aspects of healthcare today, regardless of where where that healthcare is. And so, I would like to spend probably about a half an hour or so, a little bit less, with my didactic presentation. And then I really would like to open it up for questions and answers and, and discussion, really. I'm, I'm, when I've given this session before, it has been my impression that the most interesting part of the session comes during the Q&A discussion part, because no matter what you can learn or try to learn didactically, uh, when you take it into the clinic or into the exam room or into the operating room or into the bedside in the hospital, there are always special cases, special situations and, ch and challenges um, in this job that we have in providing health care to patients. It is, I am quite certain, the most difficult of all the professions. And at the same time, we are the most honored by our patients because we are invited in their innermost lives, their innermost minds at a moment uh, the moment of illness when they are perhaps the most vulnerable and to inv invite in either either intentionally or de facto to invite in a perfect stranger to help them come through a situation like that really honors us and also challenges us to do the best we possibly can for, for them. Um, so with that, let me um, go ahead and, and Maria, if you don't mind, I'll just uh, give you a signal for the next slide. And my slides are up. Yes, they are. Um, <clears throat> there is a, a very famous piece that was written, uh, published in JAMA, um, not, about uh, almost a hundred years ago, not quite a hundred years ago, by a physician at Harvard named Francis Peabody. There are many buildings and streets named after him in, in Boston, 
And in this article, it's interesting to pull it from the archives if you want to really get a perspective on how they thought about doctor-patient interactions back in the 1920s, at least in the United States. Sorry, we seem to have lost the connection there. Okay, I'm back. Are you there? Yeah, we're still here. Okay, sorry about that. I hope it wasn't a little earthquake there. Young graduates have been taught a great deal about the mechanisms of a disease, the physiology, the pathology, but really very little about the actual practice of medicine. And he said that the significance of these relationships that we as clinicians form with our patients really are quite critical and can't be emphasized strongly enough. Hospitals, and this back in the 20s, recall, was the beginning really of the hospital era when medicine was no longer being practiced primarily in the outpatient setting, in the home, but in the hospitals. Hospitals, he said, are really prone or apt to deteriorate into a big dehumanized machine. And he worried that as time went on, the science of medicine would overtake the art of medicine. And he contended that really the science and the art of medicine are not antagonistic to each other, but are supplementary to each other. Next slide, please. Next slide. The example that I want to give, and again, I think this applies to oncology and non-oncology, but my background is in oncology, so I'll use that as an example. But the example I'd like to share is from some work that's been done recently on survivorship in cancer patients. And this is a kind of a schematic here of the trajectory or what happens to patients who have cancer. And everything outside of the gray box is what we usually think about in the physiology, the science of medicine. But what happens more and more today, at least in patients with cancer, is that they spend a lot more time inside that gray box, what we call the survivorship period. The late effects of the cancer and the treatment certainly need to be managed medically, but ultimately they're in this period where it's not so much the science of medicine that we're practicing, but more the art of medicine to really help them through their experience, to help them carry on with the rest of their lives. And this link that I put up, this reference on here from the Institute of Medicine here in the U.S. is to really quite a lovely publication about survivorship issues in patients with cancer. And there's a lot of psychosocial issues that are drawn into this time period in the cancer trajectory. And again, I think it has implications for non-oncology patients, of course, as well. Next slide. So in this monograph, they propose that there are certain essential elements of survivorship care. And this gets to the doctor-patient relationship. And you can see, I'm not going to read them all out loud because you can read them from the slide, but many of them have to do, the first three for sure, have to do with the physical practice of medicine, the practice of physical medicine. But number four there begins to set stage for what I think is really of critical importance. And it talks about coordination or communication. This is referring to communication between doctors and nurses and other members of a health care team. But it sets the stage, I think, the importance of communication between the physician or the nurse or the other clinician and the patients themselves. Next slide, please. And so they came up with a number of recommendations. And again, I'm not going to read them all out loud. You can read them on the slide as we go through. But if you look at some of these recommendations in terms of helping manage a patient in that long-term survivorship period that he or she is in, much of it focuses on one aspect or another of communication. Communication within the health care system and then, of course, communication among doctors and communication with patients. Next slide, please. 